talk a little bit about how to store your hats today at home. What's the right way to store your hats? What's the wrong way to store your hats? This is a really important thing. I'm going to get a couple of hats out here and get them ready to show you. All right. All right. This is the deal. Hats basically all get screwed up the same way. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Sorry. There was like a moth flying around. I want to get them out of here. All right. Hats, I see hats for 25 years getting screwed up all the same way. Everybody basically messes them up the same way. And, you know, everybody says to me, no, I don't do this. I don't leave my hat on the brim. I don't grab it by here. But I know they do. I know you do. Of course, I do. I'm like a 25-year-old hat store veteran fixing hats. And I still screw up. I put my hats down. There's a bunch of hats right behind me that are on the brim like that. So. Yeah. Um, I don't store them correctly all the time. I'm going to be honest, I store the hats that I like correctly. I have like maybe, I don't know, six hats that are, that are special to me. They're in boxes, they're stored correctly. Then I have maybe three or four piles of hats like this that I keep them upside down, stacked in the closet, just inside each other, upside down stacked. That's, uh, okay, let's put it this way. It's not the worst, but they're going to need a little steaming when I take them out of storage. They're not going to be perfect. Uh, the best way to store your hat is in a box upside down. It's, in, it's upside down when it's in the box. A correct hat box has a little ring that it sits on. Upside down, it elevates the brim. Number one, in the box. Number two way to store your hat that's great, upside down. Just keep it upside down. That's like the best way. It does gather dust this way, where a box you get less dust, um, but it's better than a box. Um, I'll tell you right now, when I take my hats out of the box, they always need a steaming and a touch-up. The roof of the box, whatever, it, it's never perfect, okay? Keeping your hats up to, upside down like this, with the brim flipped back to its up position, okay, flipped up, now you're saying to me, oh, but I wear my hats down. I'm not one of those hip guys like you, Kevin. I wear my hats down. I don't like that up thing. It doesn't matter. If you wear your hats down, that's all the more reason to store your hats up. Um, somebody breaks it down to you, it's really simple. I'm going to break it down to you right now. It's common sense. And if anybody breaks it down to you, you'll understand it. Okay? Here's the deal. You store your hat, you wear your hat like this down, right? Okay, it flips up and down. This is called a snap brim. It snaps up and down in the front. I know this is going to be really boring to you guys who know this, but just sit through it. It snaps up and down in the back. It snaps up and down in the front. It actually does it on the sides, too. It's a snap brim. Now, the only way to keep that snap snappy, to keep it going down, is to preserve that curve. This is a pivot point. The pivot point on the hat is right in here, next to, right there. That's the pivot point. Basically, it snaps on that. It's a hinge, okay? It allows it to go up and down. If this was flat, just flat straight out like this, there would be no snap. There would be no up or down, okay? The fact that it's curvy like that, gives it a snap and allows you to store it in the up or down position. Now, if you're the kind of guy who wears his hat down, which is the way they're intended to be worn, all the more reason for you to snap the brim back up when you're not wearing it. Because you want to preserve the scoopy, scoopiness of that curve there. Okay, that is called the flange. Okay, when you shape a brim, you put that that curve on it, you're flanging it, okay? You block a crown, but you flange a brim, okay? A brim block is a flange, that's what we call it. Flange is this curve. I, I think it comes from like the Latin or the Greek phalange, which is like it means thumb or finger bone, you know? It's, a, it's like a finger curve. It's a finger, it's basically a curve, yeah. So, I know I'm overstating my point, but it's important to overstate it. This is where every bit of damage happens. Everybody takes their hat and they slap it down on the table when they're done. What happens is if the hat's like a little bit wet, 
just from like the moisture in the air, a little moist. It's a little bit wet from your sweat or something. It gets heavy and the weight of it, it starts going down like gravity. So every time you put it down, it's getting softer and it's getting lower. Okay, so it might not happen overnight, but doing this every day, it's getting lower and lower. Softer, this doesn't have that stiffness anymore. It feels soft and floppy, right? Yeah, that's because you're leaving it on its brim. If you want this to keep its shape and to keep its snappiness and hardness, stiffness, you have to take it off the table. You cannot store it on the table like this. It's not going to work. You have to keep it upside down with this part, the brim, floating in the air. Okay, if something's floating, there's no pressure on it, there's no weight on it, it's going to dry exactly the way it is, just like this. Tomorrow it'll look like that. The long and the short of it is, when you have a brim, if you wear it down or up, especially if you wear it down, when you're not wearing it, you flip it back up and you keep it off the table. You don't put any weight on the brim. This part here has to be floating in the air. That leaves you two choices, upside down or hanging it. Hanging it is also good. A nail, a hook, a doorknob, a banister, uh, what else? Um, a coat rack, a hat rack. Uh, most popular thing is those coat racks you got in the corner. You know about those things. It was like the little trees and you stick it up on the top part of the coat rack on that little hook. That's what I do. I have one of those coat racks in my living room. There's like four or five hats and baseball hats and all kinds of stuff. Sweaters, umbrellas hanging off the thing. And if it's like too heavy, the thing falls down. It's so heavy. We stick all the hats up there because it's good. Um, the one problem with hanging it up on a coat rack or a hook, whatever, is a lot of people, they take it off like this. They grab it. Okay. Getting to number two. The other reason why it stinks to put your hat down on the table is because every single time you pick it up, you pick it up like that. In the same place. By the pinch. Right here. Okay. We all do it. I do it. Don't say you don't do it because you do it. You're lying. Okay. You try not to do it. You're aware of it. You try not to do it and you don't do it most of the time. But we all screw up and every once in a while we grab it here. Okay. The most important thing is to be aware of this. If you're aware, basically the whole reason that I put it like this is to save the brim, yes, but also so you don't grab it here. Because if it's in this position, even if you're aware that this is a bad place to grab it, you're going to do it because you're setting yourself up for the pickup. You don't think about it. You know, you're thinking about ten other things. You're thinking about what you're doing right now. You're talking to the person. You're trying to, you know, communicate. You pick up your hat and, you know, you don't think about that. Nobody does. It's unconscious. So, you've got to treat yourself like an idiot, basically, and know that you're going to grab it there eventually. Flip it. Don't set yourself up for the pickup, okay? If your hat is upside down, you're going to save the brim. The brim will stay snappy and curvy, and you're not going to get a floppy, soft brim. But also, you're not going to grab it here every time. Now, the problem is with that is that when you grab it, you're grabbing it in the exact same place. Uh, I don't know, how many times a day? Four times a day in the morning, right? You put it, you put it down at work. You pick it up after work, and then you put it back down. All right, maybe a couple more times, maybe at lunch or something. Let's say four to six times a day. All right, 365 days a year times four. You've already got like, you know, over a thousand pickups in one year. Okay, so if you've got this hat for five or ten years, 10,000 times doing this, 10,000 pickups. Now, I'm being modest. It's probably more like 20 or 50,000 or 100,000, to be honest. We pick up our hats a lot. Um, if you pick it up here 10,000 times in a row, if I sit here 10,000 times, what's going to happen to it? First of all, when you pick it up, there's a lot of pressure. Pick it up. Stop yourself. Let go. There's a lot of pressure. You squash it. It's like folding a piece of paper or, or folding an envelope or whatever. When you fold it 10,000 times, what's going to happen? First, it gets like really threadbare. You make a little kind of hole. And then after it wears out, it makes a bigger hole. And then you got a pinch hole, like a pinhole. And then you got like this huge finger size hole. Eventually, the whole front here is all ripped. 
and the front looks like that, you know, like all out of shape, with a big rip on it, with a floppy brim, and the whole hat looks horrible. Now, all this could have been avoided if you just kept your hat upside down on the shelf. So instead of having a hat that lasts you five to ten years, you could have one that lasts you, you know, fifty years. Uh, we have vintage hats at the shop that are from 1910. They're over a hundred years old, and they look like this. They look new. They really do. I'm not kidding. They look new. The leather looks new. Uh, the bow inside looks new. The silk. Everything looks new on them. They're from 1930, 1910s and stuff, 1940s. Um, these fantastic vintage hats because people knew how to take care of them back then and they didn't do all that stuff. You know, people knew how to shine their shoes and get them resold and they wore hats all the time. It was a, you know, a garment that everybody owned. They knew how to take care of it. People don't know how to take care of these things. Now, basically, we don't mind selling you more hats. That's a good thing. But if your hats last longer, you're still going to buy a lot of hats. We like that too. Your hats are lasting longer, you're going to buy better hats, you're going to buy lots of them. If your hats are lasting very badly, poorly, you're going to say, you know what, I go through my hats like crazy, I'm not going to buy a yeah, $200 hat, let me buy something cheap, uh, they last me a year. Yeah. So we want you to actually be educated, we want you to know how to take care of your stuff, because there's nobody really teaching this stuff. Um, so let's get back to it. All right. The flange of the brim is the part that usually gets the most messed up from putting weight on it. Uh, when is this important? All the time. It's mostly important to keep the brim up and off the surface of the table when it's wet. Because when it's wet, it's completely heavy and it's in a vulnerable state that it will dry any way you leave it. So if I go like this and pinch it, let it dry like that, that's permanent. That's the way it's going to even if I try straightening it out, it'll stay, it, you know. So, after the hat becomes wet, it's in this same state that it's in when I steam it, but even more intense. Anything you do, any way you set it, it's going to lock in the next day. So, what do you do with a wet hat? This is what you do. You pop it out, pop everything out so it's round, open crown. And you feel for your pinches. If you go gently, you'll find your factory pinch again, and then you're two pinches on the side, your crease and your pinch, I mean. So they're in there, they're always in there. If you pop them out and push them back in gently, you'll find your factory pinch. You want your hat to dry in its factory shape. If you dry it with a big crooked grab, that's permanent. That's your new permanent shape for the next whatever until you get it steamed. So, you want your hat to dry in its original stock crown shape. So if anything looks pinched, unpinch it. It's easier for me to just open it and then repop it. Okay, then the brim goes up. You check your brim, run your fingers along it, and straighten it. Just because your brim up is up, it doesn't mean it's straight. So what I do is I actually run around, I, I straighten it out a little bit, or I use the table as a straight edge like this. I kind of like go against the table, spin it around a little, use that as a straight edge, that works too. And then I set it down to dry and the brim is straight, it locks in like that. Um, it's most important when it's wet, but it's also important to do these things when it's dry. Anything else? Uh, when the hat is wet, let's go through the checklist, okay? First of all, you're gonna hang your hat up, or, not, or you're gonna flip it upside down. We went through that. Hang it or flip it. Okay, I think it's good to do this rather than to put it right in the box when it's wet. I, I believe in putting it in the box after it dries. You're going to get more air drying it if it's not in the box. Um, next thing, straighten your brim out, straighten your crown, unpop it, pop it back. So you know you're getting your straight factory shaping back when it dries. Okay, straighten your brim a little bit. Next, heat no heat. If your hat is wet, make sure your house is not blasting heat. Because here's the thing, um, just a, ha a hot house in like January or February when the heat is blasting from the radiator, that's enough to shrink your hat. Your leather will tighten up. So you basically want to shrink, uh, you don't want to shrink your hat, so you want to dry it at room temperature. 
That means if your house is blasting heat, you got to open the window in the bathroom and hang it in the bathroom or something. Or put it in the kitchen, hang it up and open the kitchen window a little or something. Close the door so your whole house doesn't get, you know, cold. It's like this. You can dry these hats in a hot environment. If you're doing it, it's just like throwing it in the dryer. Um, you know, if you got like 80 degrees pumping in your house in like February, and then this hat is sopping wet, um, that leather band on the inside is going to dehydrate. It's going to dry too fast, and your hat's going to shrink. So, hang it, straighten it, straighten it, flip it, um, and keep it away from heat. These are all really important things. And I think I pretty much covered everything. Don't cover it with plastic. Don't put it in your box. And wait until it's dry. And then the next day you can put it back in the box. You can put your plastic in it and stuff. Um, I also recommend if you're going out in the rain, make sure you dust your hat first, okay? Because a whole big layer of dust on a hat, see how dusty it is? If I go out in the rain now, the, the rain is going to mix with that dust and it's going to make like a mud. It makes like a whitish film on the hat. So, yeah, these things are rainproof, but they can A, lose their shape, and B, they can get muddy and dirty. So, dust your hat. All you do is get some big packing tape, you know, that big roll of white packing tape with the brown stuff. Just pat it down. It's not bad for the felt. It's not going to take anything off the felt. Anything that comes off onto the uh, tape is going to be either lint or it's going to be loose felt that's already fallen off. So don't worry about it. Get all, you can even be a little aggressive, and slap it down, get the whole thing with the tape. Don't scratch the hat, but you know, get it, get it all down, pat it down, reshape it, take pinch and everything. Okay, then go out in the rain like that. Uh, I don't know if I got any more tips for you. Just like, you know, wear your hat, have fun and stuff. And um, I guess I'll play you guys out a little bit. I'm gonna play a little guitar here. some kind of crazy effects on there, don't I? All right, let's take that off. Oh, I see. The wah-wah was on. Let's pick up one of these V-picks. It's a nice pick. It's called a V-pick. Nice. They're kind of like super expensive. Some guy makes them by hand. It's called the Blue Screamer, this one. I really like it. Let's give it a shot here. I also have a very interesting guitar. This is a 1972 Gibson Les Paul Deluxe. This is, uh, 72 was before the Les Paul Standard came out. They came out in 76. They actually discontinued them like in 61 or something, and then they came back in 76. This is a 1972, it's an old New Orleans Les Paul, an oversized headstock, uh, super wide binding, it's got the pancake body, let me see that in a different layer. See, so these are kind of a nostalgic Les Paul. And I had a very interesting modification made. Uh, in here, there's a vintage effect inside there. So if I hit the switch here, and I pull this dial out, I pull it outwards, it uh, basically triggers this effect that Frank Zappa used to have on his guitar. Uh, so I copied Zappa. It's called a Dan Armstrong Green Ringer. So if I hit it, you'll hear the difference. Okay, I'm going to hit the Green Ringer now. Ready? hits an octave higher.
pretty cool effect. And it's built into the guitar. It's definitely sweeter and warmer without it. Do a little of this. Because he's old. Yeah. He's not old. Yeah. 